Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Equestria War, which we're playing of course as the Realm of Curio. As you know, by now, it's the fifth episode, but we have another little chapter to read or journal entry from Mayflower Blue. When charlatan spins heaven into ash for the masses, while the righteous heart burns with neither smoke nor cinder, Rhapsody is a city too enraptured with the scent of its own sick sacred incense to understand how stuffy the rest of Kira thinks it is. And my stereotype of Rhapsody was confirmed when I found myself charged with apathy on my first day in the city and sent to a hearing before the newly empowered procurate. River Lily was with me the entire time but faced no charges herself and seemed more furious than anything else, promising she'd bring my family down on the matter she had to. I didn't want that. I don't like relying on my last name to get out of trouble, but I'm not above it. And with the authorities not telling me anything about the charges, I had no idea what to expect. I was ordered to remain under house arrest at my hotel with Lily until my hearing, when the magistrate, a weary-looking mayor named Luminous Flame, finally read the charges against me. For failing to anoint myself after passing under a secret gate that I'd never heard of, I was being charged with the apostasy, apostasy, my bad, oh, um, of the precepts of the way of fire and threatened with imprisonment and a vast fund. Luckily, however, Luminous Flame seemed to strongly disagree with this lawyer, and insist on calling themselves juridics here, prosecuting me. She pointed out the few that if any of the thousands of Kirin who trot under the gate bothered to anoint themselves and asked if the city is full of treacherous apostates, if they had not been all been rounded up and brought to court. I have a little familiarity with the procurate's arcane legal systems, but the time she was finished arguing with the juror dicks, they had their tails between their legs and I was only facing some obscure infraction with a fine of just two tails. When I asked how easy or how, how, asked how I was to pay, she smiled and informed me that the court was awarding me a tail a day in recompense for two days of unnecessary house arrest and I walked away entirely free. I think some Kieran and Rhapsody heard about my proposal in the Collegium and arranged to cause me trouble if I ever come to the city, and I got their message. River Lily and I have been enjoying a relaxing week together in the beaches of Jubilee, away from the overzealous proc procurate. Still, I do admire Fluminous Lame. While I was awaiting my hearing, I saw her hold court for four of the cases, and in each one, she saw nothing wrong with interrupting, arguing with, and even outright shaming the juridics for various oversights and excessively uh, zealous investigations. I doubt very much that she has a future higher in the ranks of the procurate if she spends so much time annoying the legal community, but it's refreshing to see that sometimes the law is applied honestly, even in a city with such archaic and corrupt governance as Rhapsody. That's strange, I've always thought of this, the law as rigid and unbending, which is why I was broken down so badly in the chaos before the silence, but here I saw the law bend and flow in luminous flames hooves, until it arrived at a nothing punishment befitting my non-crime, all the while still finding me guilty to satisfy the technicalities of the situation. Maybe the law it is a tool that produces the right result in the right hooves, and its letter is less important than its spirit. If even Rhapsody's labyrinthian legal code can great justice, then maybe the important thing is just that we believe that justice will come and work for it regardless of where we find ourselves. I find myself sipping the wine on the beach, snuggling with the River Lily, and wondering if I ought to have more faith than my fellow Kieran. Awesome. But we're doing the eight gold, or eight golden mayorality, so uh, and, and that was mayorality state actions, such as sitting on the map to be the state actions. Established mayoralities of Vermilion, Mascot, Radiance, Rhapsody, Fragrance, Verdant, Sorghum, and Chrysanthemum. But we have the Board of Elections, which we'll do next, and focus the Board of Elections. Um, so that would greatly reduce the cost of the political power, so which would be nice. Um, state actions. Oh, maybe state actions. Uh, Cityification Commission. Oh. Oh, I thought it meant that this meant. Oh, well, I guess I didn't read it, understand it correctly. Um, because, as we tried to do before, we can only have so many of. Uh, Supremacist parties. I don't really want to improve their situation here. But it is what it is. It's like we're down here. Hyacinth. I mean, we could do that. More war support. Total bonus war support, which is great. Number of provincial dice control, three. Nice. Helped out slightly there. Ah. Uh, so, title of Entry 11. Entry after the formation of the eight golden mayoralities, Kyria is undergoing rapid urban growth. Needs of urban, resi needs of urban residents are very, very differently from town and village, dwell village dwellers. Administration of a city is complex and requires different power, skill sets, completely different context from the governance of a province. Therefore, further evolution from provincial diets of mayoralities, the eight major Kyrian cities have their own mayoralities. A mayor and a ten-member mayoral cabinet are elected from sitting representatives of the provincial diet. They don't have to execute municipal legislation. The goal remains the same. Consultionalism, concordance, democracy, devolution, and most importantly, maximization of self-determination. Devolution is a way of diffuse tensions, divert discontent into electoral politics. It's a concession to the divergent political tendencies that exist in Kyria. None of you will get to shape the realm in your image, but as a consol consolation prize, you will at least be able to govern your own slice of Kyria to your hearts and your electorate's contempt. Very states rights. Acknowledgement. 
that Kira is a pressure cooker. And so we need pressure valves so that Kira don't feel that overthrowing the regime is the only way to get the thing they want. AB acknowledges that yes, there's a risk of this approach merely entrenching divisions via the partition of society resulting in each section of an orchestra playing its own melody unable to come together to harmony. So, it's important to promote our national identity at the same time, the notion that the Kyrian people are not merely subjects but citizens. The forging of a national identity to increase the unity of the realm's Kyrian. The seeds of such unitary uh, national identity can be found in, in the matrix spirit, the way of fire, and for now the Kyrian constitution. The rising third pillar on which the realm stands promote loyalty to the constitution. Very good. Hey, some more military factors, great. I'll uh, get another truck, why not? For some reason, uh, we can't get to this mechanized infantry, but whatever. I'll write them. Grand gallop onwards. Uh, landscape ecology, very nice. Max action state, sure, why not? Um, unlocks promote urban growth decisions, which upgrades the state category level, increases victory points in selected states, and get more base and, and, uh Stabilization. Um, I want to see what this one's like. Let's dismiss uh, Chair Kieran. I really want to see that one first before we do anything else, because we're still building our own cities up here, which is fine and dandy. Uh, but I want more roads as well. Roads are nice. Mechanical rotor ciphers. Oh, what's this? Choose a new ruling party, prevent your diet. The come and see will end in 711 days. The new provincial party must be then chosen. Oh, whoops. Well, they just cost another 75. What? Well, that's dumb. No ruling party. Oh. Oh, so wait, this for, for radiance. Oh, diet mayoral synergy. Synarchy. Bonus of production growth. Four less than three, five less than seven. No resources. What's this? So I guess we just ignore these, that's fine. Vermilion, huh? Better resources, not bad. War sport. I might prefer this one, just uh, just cause. Support weapons are nice. Focus the board of elections. Torrential downpour to Kieran, chosen by Sorshin to be voting facilitators for the provincial diet elections. That means holding. Uh, bamboo cups, hoofing out bamboo cups of water to fill them from a pail, crackers, directing voters to queue up for the voting booths, keeping an eye on the ballot boxes, hoofing out I voted stamps, and the vote counting when voting ends, when Kieran is enthusiastic, bursting with a sense of civic duty, proud to be a facilitator. The others in the grumpy, not happy with losing a weekend to this community service. The first Kieran cheers with the other Kieran up, it's an honor, you know, and why don't you feel a warm glow inside every time a voter thanks you, uh, thanks you when they leave the booth and gives you a stamp. The grumpy Kieran begrudgingly agrees, we're playing our part. Okay. Um, also, let you know, uh, we of course, this is still in... Uh, oh, Autumn Blaze is later. When did Autumn Blaze become le premiere? Oh, duh. Um, so still a preview build, as you can tell by the title. Still a preview build of everything here. Zero Radiance, you're still fine. And Rhapsody. So, you know, it still takes 25, huh? 35 is not bad for uh, research efficiency gain. Declare election season? Oh, okay. State action cost. That makes sense. So we want to save some PP for that then. We can build more millies, of course. For a cost, but we don't have the cost for that. What is this? Design category, okay. It hurts some goods if we choose that guy. What is this one? The Patriotic Renewal. The National Association of Kieran Patriots shall break out of its North Kieran heartlands and expand its reach over the entirety of their realm. Providence Rangers. Oh, that's good to do too. Peaks of Peril, Prosperous Dell, a com com Comerly, Comerly Cape, at Providence Ranger Division, Realm of Kieran, which grants less local pony power. But overall, it's not bad overall in this 
certain places. Ooh, Conrad. Oh, world class institution? A research lab would be nice. Of course, all of the following, though. Well, we only have three research slots, but you know, I'm kind of okay with what we have right now. Thank you for your service. Patriotic renewal. Something slightly better. The balance of the realm is. We're still hurt by that, but still. Certification, huh? Not bad. Let's see what this one's like. But we have a couple white tea here to keep us nice and no. Satisfied. A meeting of the NAKP Executive Com uh, Exe Execo Chair K Kieran Fickle Curtin is furious. Everyone else, including Cypress Snow and Arden Bloom, is to sign under the RAHP's constitutional amendments, in which all participating political parties in Kyria must now vow loyalty to the Matrix Superior and the constitutional order. Adherence and respect to the democratic principles and commit to pluralism. Uh, both Cypress and Arden say that this is a new world. If there's any chance for the NAKP to seize power and guide Kyria according to the vision, that chance has gone success of the three and a half year plan. We need to adapt, which means accepting the new status quo and finding a way to make the most out of it. The NAKP is so rich and powerful and enjoys strong support in North Kyria and greater providence. Fickle current vetoes this nonetheless. He's unwilling to compromise on his vision for a Kira governed by the NAKP alone. Not pragmatic, of course. Um, his vision will only lead to other parties uniting against the NAKP and alienating of its supporters and the NAKP demise. The exec co subsequently votes him out to dispose of him as Chair Kane and elects Arnon Bloom and Separate Snow as Joe Kieran of the party instead who signed on the agreement to respect the Constitution. Rip Bozo. Oh. So title here, Entry when Fickle reflects on his being deposed by Cyprus and Arden. He acknowledges that he failed to deliver on his vision of a curia ruled over by the NAKP. True to principle, Cyprus Snow and Arden Bloom smelt weakness and went in for the kill. That was valid, an aging leader with a vision past its sell-by date will be deposed and usurped by those with vigor to leave. It's only natural, the strong will call the weak. But he plans to abide his time. He remains in the party, takes a, it's insecure in some out-of-the-way place, Keeps connections and ears open. Well, the, write a book or two. Let's see how Autumn Blaze fares in her second premiership. Should her project fail, there would be a chance for me to come out of the wilderness, retake control of the NAKP or new party, and rekindle the embers of a disciplined, well oiled, hyper efficient Kieran state under capitalism and free markets. Let's wait and see. There's no rush. Oh, so it's completely gone now. Obviously, I'm not playing this very well, but you know, it is what it is. Patriot Renewal. So what happens if you just try to maximize this all across the entire world, like Rhapsody? Is there anything that happens maybe, or no? Balance of the Realm is slightly weaker than it was before, because we're negative 72% institutional stability, instead of 70%. Number of Diet Mayoral Synarchies. Or parties without representation. Impact on that. Number of... Uh, provincial dies with the ruling party before institutional stability is threatened. Huh. Well, let's see what about this. Nothing there? Okay. Protect Zykeria. Agitate for Blossom. The realm of Kira will enter in negotiations with then Kin, considering the acquisition of Kirian sovereignty over Cherry Blossom by session with regard to the democratic will of the Blossom Kirin. The Blossom Kirin will not vote for a union with Kiria. Factors because of institutional stability. And since Senkenese opinion of Roman Curia. Huh. Well. Two times express. The Realm Land Commission. Sure, I'll make a little room. Why not? So, what do we want to do with that? For 90 days. Actually, that's pretty good for resources. Um, you know what? We can choose this one to be this one. So does, how does that help? That uh, helps a little better. Number of parties without representation. Better.
takes 15. That's population. Suitable population stability. So we'll fill, fill this up. It stops hurting us as much. Uh, which was the most populous states that we have? Population. Oh, hello. Oh. This one's actually the most populous. So we'll have a lot of there too. Consumer goods, maybe we might be good move for modern Korea, maybe. Stronger than the National Association for the Korean Patriots, got 30, actually, 30, Oh, a multi denominational confessional state, we can't do that one. We'll go with that one. Applied number theory. Research for nukes and whatnot, you know, that's good. Structure speed wouldn't be bad. And there you go. So that should help out. So what if, if you hover over this, it might help um, out if we could like read. So it says number of parties without representation in the middle here. If it could like label like which parties do we not have? Like which parties, or like when you open this up and you just click on this button, something might help say, hey, uh, zero, this party has zero out of like how many states there are, 20, zero out of 20, one out of 20, two out of 20, something like that. That might be actually really beneficial maybe um, overall. I think that would be a really good idea just in case, you know, for ease of access and learning and making sure everyone knows like, like what's going on at all times. I think that'd be great, but that's just me, so. Mm, I don't want more political power. Twice as bright, huh? Is that going to help us out here a little more? Yeah, there you go. That helps us out way better. Make a little room. Autumn Blaze tried to avoid meetings of the Realm Development Planning Commission, but mostly because it tended to involve a lot of minutia that went over well over her head. But today, she'd been pulled into a meeting with Chair Karen Arden Bloom. So let me get this straight. Autumn said, looking confused, the very first five year development plans will go off the rails because you can't find enough land, but Kira is huge. Just use some land we're not using. Arden sighed and shook his head. It isn't that easy, Premier. We need quite a lot of land. It has to be in the right places to build transportation networks, factories, worker residences, mines. You get the picture. Some of the other commissioners are joking about invading the neighbors so as to have room for all the warehouses this plan is going to need. Autumn gasped. That's a horrible thing to joke about, Arden shrugged, and turned back to his binder full of reports. Maybe it is, but we're not doing that. Then the commissioner needs you to convince the secretariat to let us clean house here within our own borders. Kira is hit, like huge, like I said, but most of it is held in communal title, or it's probably owned but vacant and abandoned. Or it's legal pro legally property of the dynasty or some temple, even if it hadn't been touched in 500 years. Or it's nearly been an urban district that never recovered from the silence. You get the idea. Get us permission to repossess a land like that, and you'll have a humming Kieran economy in no time. Autumn paused and looked down, groaning. That also sounds pretty horrible, you know. You make it sound easy, but a lot of Kierans live on those lands. Again, Artist Shrug. You asked me to build your own industrial base. I'm quoting you the price tag. Simple as. Secretary isn't going to put a few squatters ahead of the future of Kira, isn't it? Or is it? Fine, we're going to have slightly more stability. Fine. Homegrown Kieran Core. A Kira Core for measure success. And actually, so you have enough institutional stability to get more political power. It's not bad. And 
Interesting, as I'm just still, as I said before, still learning this. Let me guess. Might as well, I suppose. Oh. Oh, crap, I forgot I would do one of this deal. So now they're all going to be super balanced with each other, huh? Interesting. I might take Ember away, but I guess we don't really need that now. Young Kyria party. I wish we could do more. Sorghum. Research speed isn't bad. Extreme goods would be nice, though. More political power. Ah, uh, screw it, why not? Holy crap, four? Of course, we're not doing this one, too. Um, which one do we want to do? Homegrown Kiracorn? Three a day? Jesus Christ. Okay, that's interesting. That's very unique. I like what the devs have done with this donation. I'm, I'm still learning what we can do here and whatnot, but... Um, I think it's very good. Very, very good. Fragrance, what do you want? So we've done research speed before. Chrysanthemum. That's not the head of time. And then the New Times Express. That'll be good next. So a little bit more time and we'll have it done. 13 days, not bad. Apricot, huh? There you can have the monthly population one. Yeah, screw it, why not? Just a 6% more political power gain and whatnot. Jesus. Alright, we're gonna wait. And it's December, everybody. Happy December. The measure of success. Firework flash grinned into the cameras as the recording light flared to life, and the film began to roll. Welcome back to another Flash Facts interview. She welcomed the audience that will soon see her newest reel in a few days. I'm your hostess, Firework Flash, and I'm here today with Midnight Moon, CEO of Kowloon National, and she added with a wink and a stage whisper, my old classmate at Manhattan Polytechnic. Why don't you tell us a little bit about KN and the work you've been up to, uh, Moon? I'd be happy to, Midnight Moon said, smoothing out invisible wrinkles in her dress skirt and smiling with charm and charisma into the camera. Calvin Nash was always about individualism, hard work, and the value of the free market, but perhaps most importantly, we are firm believers in Kieran patriotism. Unlike the other powerhouses of the economy, KN is a true uh, Kieran, uh, Kieran corporation without any roots or ties to foreign investors or capital. The Grand Gallup Bomber provided wonderful opportunities to succeed, and in the economic boom that followed, KN took advantage of the tremendous demands for natural resources and raw material for the realm's flourishing construction and manufacturing market. A true investment of the realm. You'll love to see a flash said, and then her tone shifted from supportive to questioning. I do have to ask, of course, about the mass redundancy of accusations and the headlines about your lobbyists working hard to prevent the implementation of ongoing minimum wage legislation in the morning secretariat. How can Kane claim to be our champion of Kirian or Kirin, Kirian, Kirian interest when the uh, company fights so hard to deny rights to its workers and punishes those who step out of line? Moonflash sharp a uh, flash a sharp glare. Though fate is, she, she gave her answer. Grit and hard work separate the wheat from the chaff, and Kane's interests are the interests of the realm. Our close work with the military means that success for KN is safety for the realm. We are a meritocracy, not a charity. Then how can you justify KN receiving subsidies from the government? Flash asked, but rather than respond, Moon smiled into the camera and stood up to leave. Thank you for the interview, Flash, but I really must be going. Well, we need subsidies, you know, to help to make sure that we can push forward. No matter what. Using the subsidies, we establish a meritocracy. Easy as easy is. Easy, easy, easy. Verdant, huh?
you, got, you guys can be a bunch of commies down there. Institutional stability is not bad. Lots of peepee. Uh, you, you could easily manipulate a lot of this political power in the future, though. Just saying. Oh boy. That was looking kind of thick and large up there. The world class institutions next. Play in the face. Other parties cost. Oh. Well, yeah, whatever. It happens. Divinity lessons. National police. Lines of harmony is not bad, too. Stop till. Last stop till fragrance. Now, every Kieran, please settle down. Settle down. Don't crowd the platforms. There's no spots for any Kieran not carrying tickets already. I'm afraid not even a bucket of tails could buy you into, into or onto any of the fine locomotives we're about to witness, but fear not, all there is to be daily, non-stop services from right here in Sorghum Central Station, to the furthest reaches of our fair land and utmost comfort. You might have better luck inquiring at our ticket encounter above tomorrow's trains, venture on the mighty gallopers run north of Fragrance in the morning, or perhaps follow the mellow flue south of Verdant with Goldenrod. I hear. Globe trotter service at Chrysanthemum. This will be the most luxurious of all, but don't go now. Stay right here. There they come. The meeting of South, North, and West right here in Sorghum. Perhaps the announcer of this event was getting a bit ahead of herself compared to the crowd, but the New Times line was paying her to get the crowd excited. Now that they, not that they needed much more reason, but right on time, as the announcer finished speaking, three new locomotives burst under the train station to a chorus of awed and excited gasps. There were no cankerous, old and ported boilers like these Kirans had seen before, and as much unison as could be expected, their three sleek and modern locomotives will still bear in their factory shine, pulled up to the platforms, and began discharging crowds of porters, guards, and passengers. Walter Russ, Fragrance, Business Care, and a temple's worth of chrysanthemums, mystics, and a huge contingent of verdant nobles, all mingling on the platform at once, for the slung cities of Kirio brought together in, heart, in its heart. Two extra tails will get you into the parlor car. Cool. Player of the Triumph of Modernization. Oh, look at that. Now, I read this earlier, so you read this, please go ahead. Substantial science space with developed science space. Hey, that'd be really good, actually. Let's click on that. What's that? What is this? Uh, we'll do the Rome's resources, Steps of Conrad, and eventually Guardians of Zebrica. Pansy proportionality, proportionality Principle of Warfare enables the Defender of Harmony decision mechanic. Allows us to demand disarmament from warmongering expansionists or otherwise unharmonic countries in Zebrica. If they refuse, we choose to launch a military invention against them. Add Proportional Warfare Doctrine. Public cost goes down. Axe cost goes up. Experience soldiers' losses goes down. Or compliance growth speed. Attack against modern countries goes down by 10%. Breakthrough against minor countries go down by 10%. Interesting. Very interesting mechanics they have there. So now we get more political power for stability. I'm kind of okay with that. Get a debuff, but we already have some of these on, so. They're all the resources. And finally, the fourth resource slot. Beautiful. Absolutely fan flipping fantastic. 100%. There you go. Yeah, we'll do this one, and Mirror and Factory would be nice, too. Cool. Got a lot of places with that things here, huh? What's this one? Monthly population? Sure. No more communism? Not great, but whatever. Alright, a little more stability, why not? And 50% institutional stability, nice. Number of suspended provincial diets? Parties without representation. Huh. Interesting. Establishment of Conrad. Most of the dismay of many corporations that follow the fickle current and the diaspora home after the end of the silence. Hopes for a curia aligned with free market capitalism are now thoroughly dashed. The Morning Secretariat's ambitious plans for ongoing modernization and expansion of the Kieran economy and military were deemed too important to rely on any foreign entanglements. Instead, Kyle Lin National, the rising homegrown star of the Kieran economy, or Kieran, Kieran economy, has been given controversial grant of authority to ensure autarky and self sufficiency in Kieria. The Kyle Lin National Resource Allocation Division seems part public. Uh, private partnership, part state-owned corporation, and part central planning committee. The new Conrad board of directors reflects its elected makeup. Government ministers, elected delegates, appointed technocrats, and of course, Kowloon National's own executives to form a group of strange bedfellows to be leading the economic development of Kiria. 
In a joint press conference between the government and Conrad, KN CEO Midnight Moon seemed almost giddy. I'm proud that the government has entrusted this important duty to Cal and National. Like we would for any client, we promise that the rum nothing less than the best. I can guarantee that over the next few years. Conrad will be responsible for tens of thousands of new jobs and millions of tons of affordable raw materials for a growing economy. And the money these jobs and materials create will be invested right here at home. Here's to another decade of growth in Curio. At least Cowlin's sure to deliver the goods more than can be said for the rest of the world. Oh, oh what the heck. Cowlin National has been tasked with enacting the Realm and Harmony Party's pledge to assure Kyrian resource autarchy in the near future so as to protect the sovereignty of Kyrian's industrial growth and the vagaries of the global resources market and a hedge Kyrian uh, production against possible disruptions of supply chains by war crisis or geopolitical entry to the end. Cowlin National has been granted sweeping commands. Oh boy. Um, uh, command and control over the Kyrian uh, industry. An unprecedented level of authority over the realm's economy by an anomaly private sector corporation to make even the most influential Skyfallian trading house or the Medjuporian Parastatal envious. Modify the output. Oh, okay, so you use 3%. We have only have a maximum of 4 resources produced by civilian factors simultaneously. I was gonna go do three, four. Oh crap! Oh, that costs political power. Uh oh, that's not good. The Kirin Universal Exposition of ten thirteen. Kirin's modernization is complete. Autumn Blades declares that Kirin is officially a modern society. Oh crap! Cuts the ribbon to open the Kirin uh, Universal Exposition, a massive world's fair to celebrate the triumph of Kirin culture, Kirin modernization, its full emergence from the silence into the modern world, all the industrial, and technological, and scientific advancements made during the GGO. Kyria is a strong, united, harmonic nation. Celebrations and revelry guests from around the world. A special thanks to our pony friends from Equestria. Applejack is a guest of honor. The future looks bright. I should not have kicked them out, but oh well. Agitate for Blossom. I do want to do this one next, but I guess Kirin holding Corpin. Pansy's proportionality principle of warfare. This event explains Kyrian proportional warfare doctrine and Kyrian attitude towards proactive defense of Harmony and Zebrica. Kyrian military instructor giving li Lecture to cadets and officers. She says, Cyrus Pansy was an accomplished states mayor and one of the founders of Equestria, but she was also one of the most innovative military theorists of her time. Her jurisprudence on conduct is consistent with harmony and warfare, still studied by militaries all over the world. The principles of harmonic warfare she created include military necessity, distinction of proportionality, prevention of unnecessary suffering, and honor. To give a brief explainer of these why and they're important. Literally, from to go to Wikipedia. But Pansy also came up with the concept of a just harmonic war. Just ad bellum, for which he is less well known. This part of our military thought isn't taught in the question of military colleges. A just war is occasioned when innocent life must be in imminent danger and intervention must be to protect life. First, maybe use only to correct a grave evil against harmony that is aggression or massive violation of basic natural rights of whole populations. Justify to take proactive and preemptive action in a restricted set of situations to protect harmony. A duty to fight to protect harmony and defeat evil or genocide. Harmony isn't a static state. It's a balance which must be kept. Pacifism is not always congruent with harmony if it means sitting idly by while atrocities happen. Interesting. Now we're doing hold, Kieran Holding Corporation, like I said before, we faded and faded out. And we'll do Adjective for Blossom. Maybe. We'll see. Still want to expand Conrad's powers. Oh, we can expand even more? Interesting. Okay, so Defenders of Harmony. The Vermilion Realm of Kyria, having successfully emerged from the silence, is ready to assume the noble duty of defending Harmony and Zebrica. Kyria will marshal its vast industrial and military resources to ensure that extremist forces will not threaten Harmony, a delicate balance between order and chaos on the continent. Demand Chitali disarmament. Has met at least three of our criteria to cause a justified military intervention against them. Cause more than 4% of world tension, more than four occupied states, more occupied states than core states. Brutally oppressing another country. Huh. Potential current enemy of Kyria. Enemy of Kyrian ally, larger standing army than Kyria, has a war goal against another country, is justifying a war goal against another country. So, what if we do that? We might end up in war. Okay, that might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Okay. We've got plenty of guns and artillery, so. Mm, no, let's reset that real quick. We'll get 29 combat for now. So. Oh, supplies are not looking good here, are they? Oh, they accept the ultimatum. You all know Chitel has accepted our ultimatum. They have three months to downsize their army according to our demands. If they comply, we'll enter a non aggression pact with them as a sign of goodwill. 
If they fail to comply, we'll have a mandated military intervene against them. Nuclear stuff, oh god. Um, Agitate for Blossom. Sure, we'll try this one. By Kira, by Kira. The business interests of Northern Kira are never to be outdone. Under the watchful eye of and some alleged guiding hoop of the Realm Development Planning Commission, a juggernaut of Northern Industrial Might has emerged. With a name befitting its aspirations, the Kira Integrated Resource Industrial Network Holding Group, or simply Kirin, began life as a conglomerate of the Sci C trading houses industrial interests just a few short months ago. And while the money seems to trace back exclusively to Sci C, every NKP business Kirin, and politicians proudly promoting their role in cutting through red tape so that Kirin could expand. No official documentation has surfaced, but Arden Bloom and Cypress Snow are alleged to, to hold a majority of Kieran's shares between them. Kieran has described his business model as opportunistic acquisition of troubled assets and a long-term growth strategy. Kieran's attractors have described it as nothing less than a predatory hyper-hegemon, the kind of monopolistic entity that has come to define the aspirations of a modern Kira uh, corporate. Increasingly buying up everything from the mines to textile plants to shipyards, Kieran's seemingly bottomless coffers have allowed it to secure almost total dominance of the economy of greater providence. Whether buying a new set of saddlebags or negotiating contracts for a modern fighter aircraft, a Kirin north of Vermilion is probably doing some business almost exclusively with companies held by Kirin. Sci-C Trading House uh, took the company public at an extremely ritzy conference in Gala held in Sci-C over the past few days, NIKP grandees. Government officials, prominent business mayors, and every stockbroker worth their salt in Kira could be found in attendance. Sipping complimentary Kirin branded malt from the holding group's recent expansion into the brewing industry. If it's true that the NIKP's leaders own large amounts of Kieran stock, they certainly became vastly richer over the weekend. There's no music like the jingling of tails and pockets. Nice. A bonus for electronics. Of course, this would probably help out quite a bit too. What is this place? Calmly, prosperous dells. Three hundred days. Oh, that takes a long time. I'll do it anyway. Screw it. From a POV of all Kirin in the midst of all this, this event explains the situation with Blossom and Kira. Maybe they have a scene where the protagonist is attending a street rally to give exposition. Lore: Blossom was an independent city state of Kirin that was the southernmost city in the Vermilion realm of Kiria prior to the silence. When the silence happened, the realm fell apart, and Blossom ended up being conquered by the Zykirian city state of Plotus. All right, there. Um, since then, it's been a part of the kingdom of Sen Kin. The way of fire holds strong in Blossom. Blossom re remains connected to Kiria religiously, culturally, familial ties. See the state lore description for more info. Now, since Kiria emerged from the silence, Blossom's successful grand, grand gallop onward in Kiria's modernization, political forces in Blossom, including the city's way of fire sect, and also Kirian political parties, most notably the NKP, the Young Kiria Party, and the radical constitutional caucus of the RAPHP, agitate for Blossom's reunification of the realm of Kiria, for varying reasons. To give a Blossom Kirin, some Blossom Kirin, it's an appealing prospect. Vermilion has sent uh, the authorities in Blossom and treaties, inquiring as to Blossom's reunification. There are trilateral negotiations, Kiria, Sen, Kin, and Blossom. Political atmosphere in Blossom heated as different parties and groups agitate for reunification with Kiria or stay with Sen, Kin. References, Alsace Lorraine, French Sarland, Danzig, Anschluss, Kiria, Response. So where do you see the thing between us and them? Got some wildfire, which is good. Now, what does this say? Continue from above, set the scene for Lotus of Response to Vermilion. Blossom waits bait with bated breath, calm before the storm. Marches, rallies, and demonstrations to intensify some low intensity street violence. Reports of NKP members stirring up trouble in the city, provoking fights, marching around ostent ostentatiously in their party uniforms, but otherwise keeping in line thuggishly. Curious response. Would it be under military actions, I would assume? Mm, I guess not. Alright. Oh, the Yaldum Chital completes the disarmament. Look at that. The Autumn Chittles disarmed according to our ultimatum. Peace and harmony have been guaranteed, at least for the time being. They will not go to war, expand our military because their military has been shrunk. As promised, we will send a non-aggression pact with them. Okay, interesting. Procuria, 1058. Owner accepted our request for a referendum in Blossom. 
Already we're sending people over to set up and supervise a referendum. Representatives from Vermilion, Lotus, and International Observers from Agriphonia Equestria and Epigraphia are present as well. Exciting news! Or exciting times. Give a sense of excitement, possibly a referendum. Uh, election fervor and blossom, but not too much violence, as Kieran's are respectful of the vote. Excite! And they vote either way or union with Kyria. Because uh, support for union is 60% because of stability, institutional stability, societal development, industrial capacity. Uh, and that's in Kenny's opinion of us. Huh? Well, that's an easy fix. I guess we could send volunteers too, but still. So it should slowly improve, and we should be okay overall. Changing tack. Well, I'll do this one next, probably. Next up, building up some railways, why not? Recruitable population factor versus. Why not? Another division, beautiful. Ten twenty. yourself up. Alright. Change attack. Blossom votes to unite with Kyria. Hurrah! A column of Kyrian honor guard from the matriarch already knew, symbolizing it is Kyria and the matriarch appear the uniting symbol of the nation in Kyrianity, who is taking control of Blossom. And now Kyria's bickering political parties are the first to enter Blossom on trucks greeted by cheering pockets and Kyrian flags. Or Kyrian flags. Who vote for ceremonies tuned by Autumn Blaze and Cinder Tempest. Kyria's response. Now oh, we get a coronet. Hey, that's awesome. Look at that. Cherry Blossom is ours. Get some more goods. Give him more political power because why not? God off amount of political power. Jesus Christ, that's so much. It's insane. Penguin. And then. Yeah, might as well a certification commission, maybe a multi-denominational confessional state, yeah. Oh my god, 67% institutional stability. No negative modifiers. Carthaginian Republic looks good, you're up here in Commonwealth. People are really killing each other all over here, and Equestria is on a two for a war. That's not really good for them, is it? Many of the party charter. We're in a position where we're expected to pale by the rules of the system we agreed to three and a half years ago. Separate Snow looked to be the other board members. The discussions around the NAKP's party charter have been ongoing for a good while, and while, as seemingly always was the case, he found himself at odds with Ard and Bloom. I know that some of us find the Constitution stifling, but its principles are sound and offer stability. Going ahead, there is little sense of maintaining our military assets. There are a drain on our refinances. We have plenty of market opportunities without resorting to aggressive expansion. Disbanding them and disavowing aggressive expansion has been focusing on soft power efforts that is completely in line with the current mode of the government and will net us good wealth plenty. While we are in agreement that we should bring our charter in line with the Constitution, it is not, it will never be, and cannot be controversial to protect one's property. Dr. Arden Bloom interjected. Hamstringing our ability to protect our assets to make a show of enthusiastic compliance is a mistake. I'm in favor of ceasing proactive expansionism, but that much we can trade away. But our mandate is Kyrian uh, economic interests, and we hope to fulfill that we have to ensure that we can protect our interests. There's nothing about recent global events that indicates that corporate pacifism will be the most efficient alone. There is no discussion of pacifism here. We're talking about aggression, not security. If the situation has proven untenable enough that proactive military forces need him, we should be divesting, not deploying. This is not extreme. This is standard operating procedure for companies across the world. Furthermore, the assets we free up will be available for other more peaceful ventures. Do we wish to invest in the future or cling on to an old money pit? The looks from the other board members turn more and more open to the idea, and Cypress Snow 
Spawn smiled. Our highest goal is security and peace and prosperity. We'll not focus on the South Venture. The South Sea Venture. Interesting. Oh, look at that. The riches of the far south. You get uh, available as an industrial concern. The south Sea Venture Company. Interesting. You can also modify synthetic rubber or synthetic refinery at rubber output by plus one. Nice. I don't think I've researched a single plane yet, have I? Roughly five political power day, my god. Absolutely insane. Oh, increase cost, cost. Sure, why not? We support that. Infantry support research scheme. And we've all this to go through, too. Interesting. Basically a modern military. Love it. Northern Mericulture. The South Sea Venture. The riches of the far south. I'll go to this one. The Mystics Magisterial. The Mystics Magisterial and Ministerial of the Radiant Hierarchy. Okay, interesting. Um, Multi-denominational confessional state. The Flame of Faith. For land and labor, let's, let's fight together. In general, entry for Mayor, Mayflower Bloom. We're going to start reading about these. Gun river boats. Or river gun boats. The great mellow fluid and other rivers are the lifeblood of Kyria. It's crucial that we learn how to utilize them not only for trading, but also for military purposes. Through the use of gunboats, our armies will be able to navigate and attack through rivers with unmatched efficiency. The Army Air Corps. Unfortunately, after a century of isolation, our Air Force is pretty not much non-existent. There's a lot of catching up to do, including building new air bases and studying imported plane designs and the theories of warfare. However, the Kieran and the military are optimistic they will manage to catch up and create proper Kieran Air Corps in no time. New Army General Staff. After the silence, Kyria lacked experienced officers and general staff, with their only experience being quelling rare revolts against the Matriarch's decrees. It's beginning to change, but our general staff still requires some reforms. Uh, if we are to make Kyria's army truly a modern and competent one, of course. Which we should be able to. Oops, I don't want that one. There you go. There you go, too. Um, Fragrance Admiral Team. Fragrance still used to be the center of Kira's maritime power before the silence. Even nowadays, the can find the sunken ships from the old mothball fleet near its coast. So it naturally helped the city to return to its former glory as the realm's main port and the seat of power of its Admiral Team. Close air support aviation. In addition to bombing crucial targets, aircraft can also be used to provide substantial support to infantry. If used properly, though, it could use to tip the scales in our favor significantly. Of course, due to our lack of experience with the planes in general, we need to thoroughly study the strategy first so that we not accidentally bomb our own soldiers. But, trotting in a modernity. Reforms of Vermilion Civil Service, uh, with the consent of the Circle of Serene Tendency. Before the Vermilion State was an, elect an eclectic institution, semi theocratic, with mystics and priestesses occupying key roles. There was also some local governors, mayors, chiefs, and autonomous banner clans, etc. Under this mixture, I crafted a secular modern civil service based on the equestrian model. Now, with the Grand Gallop on were successful, we have breath, uh, breathing space to consider more in depth the nuanced reforms of the government. The first step of which is a common oath sworn by all servants of the Vermilion State, be they local, uh, provincial, or national officers, elected or appointed, secular, religious, nonpartisan, or political. The oath took a long time to get right. Winter Frost wanted specific references to Concord and the Way of Fire. The movement for modern Kyria wanted references to the Kyrian nation. The Marxists wanted references to the Kyrian people. Some ultra traditionalists wanted references to the Vermilion dynasty. In the end, we agreed to do the on the oath being sworn to the two things the Matriarch Superior and the Kyrian Constitution in that order. Some of the more radical RAHP delegates wanted the Constitution to come first, but in the end, we decided the Matriarch was the one thing all Kyrian, no matter their political inclination or beliefs, could agree that on that united us all. I let a crowd of 1,000 servants of the Vermilion State gather before the uh, Verdigris Rotunda, swear this new oath this morning in the presence of the Rainsheim, on one who from the master copy of the Kyrian Constitution. This precious document codifies the new and modern Kyria. 
The Vermilion State is uh, still a patchwork of overlapping jurisdictions governed by different rules, different structure, different powers, hierarchies, and all that. And it's very, all very inefficient, to say the least, and irrational. It took a long period of gradual modernization to make it anything resembling a rational, streamlined modern state, but that's okay. It reflects the plurality of different groups who coexist harmoniously with each other that constitutes the power, colorful tapestry of the Kyrian nation state and community. I'll dub this harmony and diversity, another integral part of the nascent Kyrian national ethos. Sure, why not? There you Connected here, as we must be. Which are academy research speed? Oh, that's cool. Uh, honestly, this is probably the best one. The South Sea Venture. The riches of the far south, with the NAKP having sold off much of its military assets, it's found itself flush with cash and chosen to invest in foreign trade. In the pre silence era, Kira's grasp on the southern trade routes were to near total, and the NKP's new subsidiary, the South Sea Venture Company, has been tasked with restoring some of these old routes. Seeking to tap into the riches of uh, the Zebrakin Far South, the S SVC has begun to build a series of trade ports along the coastline. These free trade ports are setting up connections as careful as such, where the local tribes, the tribes of the Talayari, especially are infamously hostile to outsiders, in no small part thanks to the legends of the great golden city hidden deep in their jungles and the adventures this has, of course, attracted. Yet for now, the outposts have remained untouched, and the tribes are slowly making contact with ports everywhere where everything they could ever dream of is available at a reasonable price. Not just goods either, but technology and training. Long term, the tribes open to trade will be offered contracts to develop the regions economically, which in turn will offer them unmatched prosperity and access to lucrative markets in Kyria and beyond. Don't worry, it's all peaceful. Boom times in the south. Next, huh? The Wing Luck Whirlwind. The Wing Luck Consortium, despite coming from beyond Kyria, has been the main force behind the development of the new Kyrian Air Force. Recently, they've come forward with a new bomber design called the Whirlwind, able to fill different bomber roles with ease. We should invest in this new design and introduce it to our Air Force. Banner Kirin Cadres. Banners have been the backbone of the Kirin army for centuries, but while the system has served us uh, well so far, it's not without flaws. We need to ask our reforming the Banner Kirin into a proper professional army. Their experience, combined with a more random, or <laughs> random, modern conscription system, will allow our army to be a force to be reckoned with. Defense and death. They're almost vast, and we can certainly use it to our advantage for defense purposes, that should the needs arise. Should we face a superior enemy, we should retreat deeper into the country and employ scorched earth tactics to slow and spread them out, strain their supply lines, give our soldiers time to reorganize and prepare a strong counterattack. Wireling detachments. Barbed wire can be an incredibly useful defense tool, but it tends needs to be constantly repaired, rebuilt, and improved for that reason. We need to train specialized wireling detachments that would support our regular soldiers. It would be a hard, dangerous, and thankless job with, with enough motivation, though, and probably a bonus of our wages, we should find enough volunteers. Hey, you can do in the north, look at that. The Frontier's Mayor Armed Services. Gears boards along and behind them are many creatures who would gladly take a piece of our realm. We cannot devote the entirety of our army to protecting them all the time. We need to establish regiments of Frontier's Mayor. Brave Kieran, who would patrol our borders, warn of an incoming invasion, be the first to save it off. Boom times in the South. Times are good for the South Sea Venture Company. After their initial hesitation, the tribes have discovered a hunger for modern goods, and several tribes in the region have established closer borders or bonds with the company. Firearms in particular have been of great interest, and the tribes are willing to let large tracts of land of the SSVC in exchange for them. This land is not only being used to plant the first rubber plantations in the region, but the natives be able to buy goods at reduced rates in exchange for their labors there. To capitalize on the boom times, the SSVC is planning the construction of outposts up the rivers in order to reach more tribes. River boats are being brought in to take an expedition up the rivers to convince the inland tribes to let the SSVC establish itself, and the company is currently courting investors. It's quite the opportunity. Heart of the jungle, huh? So stuff we don't care about. This one would be cool. Oh, at least five synthetic refineries, huh? I don't even have that technology. Okay, then. Well, I'll also close out of this, then. Radio propaganda, the Kieran army, not much we can do. Advanced trucks, nice. Armor trains are nice. Kind of going to be kind of a catch-all. 
How times have changed. Autumn Blades was Grand Gallop onward succeeded. And for which I'm grateful. Those Concords well and happy that the serene tendency played a part in Kyria's modernization. We're central to the success of the GGO. We made sure to not stray from the path of Concord. We've done our duty as First Priestess. I've done do, too done my duty, leading the serene tendency in all the faithful Kieran of Kyria. Like a shepherd down the perilous path into modernity. I feel proud of the changes that have overcome Kyria Vast, but we have succeeded in balancing modernity with stability. The hierarchy's power is fading. That was always going to happen, but I've made sure that the serene tendency always have a role to play in the governance of the realm and the guidance of his Kieran. Autumn Blaze needs me, first priestess of Winterfrost, in the way of fire to ensure piety. Piety means loyalty to the matriarch. It is a glue that binds the realm together. Autumn Blaze knows this, I know this too. The way fire will always remain in the lifeblood of the Kyrian national culture and civilization. It will make sure Kyria stays pious, a realm of conquered subjects. The way fires rode the tide of modernization and crest the wave. We have come out stronger, refined, more resolute in our faith and certain of our future, casting out the shackles of the silence. It's a big deal because for the longest time, the way of fire was the most reactionary and conservative tendency in Kyria. I to give Autumn Blaze credit where it's due. She really managed to offer a vision for a modern Kyria, wherever the Kyrian. Even the reactionary and conservative way of the fire had a place in stake. That the way of fire went from modernity's staunch opponent to a committed supporter thereof without having to sacrifice any of its core tenets is a testament to the Autumn's skills and vision as a state smear, and her ability to accommodate and reconcile even the most different and diametrically opposed tendencies. Here's is a true understanding and master of that which we shall call harmony. Fall of sailing. Oh. Good job, Equestria. You're doing really well. Oh, uh, two of these, huh? Oh, look at that. Minus 5% political power. Changes to urban type. Land clearance and Oxendale. Stability. Oh, is this? Oh. Save 150 PP for this one. Sure, why not? Urban gunboats. I still get quite a bit every day, so I'm not super... Super worried about it, but I do want to read about the Heart of the Jungle one before we uh, end the episode. End the episode itself, so. which we should get soon. Early in basics, not bad. Matriarch Superior, Premier Autumn Blades, members of the Morning Secretariat. It's my pleasure to report that our endeavors in the far south have started to bear fruit. With the increased security, we have managed to crack down a banner tree and stabilize the coastal regions. Our construction efforts are proceeding on schedule, and every day we're offloading more material and staff. The South Sea Venture Company is at the moment preparing an expedition towards the Golden City along with their local allies in order to stabilize the region more permanently. Forgive my interruption, and Fern Flair spoke up, but as far as I know, the kind of expedition you're speaking of has been attempted repeatedly with few, if any, successes. The Griffin started attempted a century ago. It ended the complete destruction of the expedition and became enough of a fiasco that they refused to enter the jungles again. Are we planning to aid or add ourselves to that list? Technology has advanced since then, and the expedition you speak of was ostensibly destroyed by some magical monster in the jungles. The Griffins are infamously arrogant and have to admit that they were defeated by tribe zebras with spears and bows do not are, was not acceptable to them. Thus, they conjured up stories of giant monsters to save face. As for other expeditions, they are mostly private ventures with a fraction of the resources we will be deploying here. In fact, to those who are interested, the SSVC is courting additional investors at this time. Those who worry about ex the expedition's safety are more than welcome to invest in it to improve their chances. To those who don't doubt the SSVC's ability to pr properly prepare for what awaits, we're expecting great returns on these efforts. Remind their honorable co-chair Ken not to hawk company shares and secretariat. So, cool. We get down the artery of the interior, which we'll do in the next episode, which will probably be the final episode of this campaign. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in what will probably be the final episode for this campaign of the Realm of Curia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.